Hello and welcome to Second Drafts, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Continuing where we left off in the last video, we're going over how to create a Kindle file step by step. Today we'll be creating an HTML file and cleaning the code from it so that you can have a nice template to customize your book with. Now if you aren't comfortable with HTML, there are programs you can use to help in compiling your Kindle file at the point you are right now. like. Scrivener, Kinstant, or even just uploading the doc file to Amazon or using their Kindle Gen program. You can also hire someone to format the file for you. However, and this is a big however, there are downsides to these approaches. First, Scrivener, Kinstant, and other programs like these often cost money to buy or use. I want to show you a way to make a Kindle file that's not going to cost you money. Secondly, while programs like Kindle Gen and Calibre can take your doc file and make a Kindle file out of it, the results can sometimes be less than desirable unless your doc file is perfectly formatted. I want to show you a way that gives you as much control over the look and feel of the file as possible. The only caveat with this approach is that it takes more time than those mentioned above. We'll be covering the programs mentioned above in a future episode of Second Drafts. But for those who don't want to pay money and want control over the look of your book, keep watching. Let's head to the computer and get started. So now we're on our computers and the first thing that we'll want to do is create the HTML file from our Word document. So open up your manuscript in whatever Word program you have. If you've been following along, in our last video, we cleaned the manuscript of things like double spaces between words and things like that. It's crucial that that is done before this step. So if you haven't done so, watch the last video and get that done first, then come back. All right, with your manuscript open, go to the Windows icon at the top left, or most likely File in any other Word program. Then click on Save As. Now in the window that's popped up, in the Save As Type drop-down, select Web Page Filtered if you have it. Otherwise, Web Page or HTML if not. Web Page Filtered will reduce the amount of code in the file and make our jobs easier. On the left, make sure to choose a location where you'll be able to find the file easily. I like the desktop, so it's right there, and if I want to, I can move it elsewhere pretty easily. There. Now we have an HTML file. Now we're going to go about cleaning the code from the HTML file. But before we do that, there is another option to help you out and make the cleaning easier. But in general, I don't like to use it, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So if you want to make this a heck of a lot easier, open up the program Notepad which is usually found by going to the Start menu, then All Programs, then Accessories. Now, with Notepad open, go back to your manuscript, click Ctrl-A, then right-click on the text, and click Copy. Now go back to Notepad, right-click on an empty space, and click Paste. Now click Ctrl-A on your keyboard, and copy it from the Notepad. Now open a new Word document in your usual Word program, right-click on an empty space, and click Paste. What this has done is removed a lot of the formatting that may have presented itself through your changes and reset it to the default style for your Word program. Once you save this as an HTML file or a filtered HTML file, there won't be as much code to remove as before. The only issue with this is if you have certain styles that Notepad doesn't work with, they will be removed. For instance, in my books, when the characters are thinking, 
I present those thoughts in italics. Once it goes in a notepad, those italics are lost. So I would have to re-add italics back in individually, which is probably more time-consuming and tedious than removing the code in the first place. So weigh in whether this will cause more harm than good. But generally, if you just have plain text, no bold, no underline, no italics, you should be fine to use this method, and it will make your job a lot easier. Either way, now you have an HTML file to work with, and we need to open it so that we can look at the code and manipulate it to our liking. You'll generally need a program to do so, and I recommend Notepad++. Not to be confused with Notepad, which we just used. Notepad++ is a great program which uses color to represent certain strings of code, and that will help us find what we need to remove. So, install Notepad++ first, then come back and we can move on. Now that we have Notepad++, go to where you saved your HTML file and right-click on it. Select Edit with Notepad++ to open the file. If you don't see that, go to Open With and see if it's in that list. If it's not, then you'll have to click on Choose Default Program and search for it in there. The other way you can do this is by opening Notepad++. Go to File on the top left, select Open, and find the HTML file that way. So here's a basic breakdown of HTML and how it works. For our purposes, there are three main tags which we'll be working with. What are tags? They are sequences of code that begin and end with angle brackets, or sideways Vs if you will. The three main tags we're worried about are the paragraph tag, which is the letter P, italics, which is the letter I, and hyperlinks, which are represented by the letter A. Our goal is to have all paragraphs begin and end with clean paragraph code and nothing else within the brackets. There is one exception to this with the letter A tags for hyperlinks. The hyperlinks might be to a web page or a table of contents you might have made in your manuscript. If you did neither of these, then just remove any you see, though there should be none. If you've made a table of contents, you'll want to remove the tags associated with it, as we'll be making a table of contents specifically for an ebook later. Check the web address in the tag, and if it doesn't look familiar, then remove it. There are also special characters for certain types of text, such as quotations and ellipses, which you'll want to keep. Ellipses sometimes don't transfer over perfectly, so you may want to search your text after we're done and change all ellipses to this code to make sure they are coded properly. Now the first thing we want to do is remove all this junk at the top held by the style tags you see here. We don't need it because these are left over from the word program style options. So at the bottom, click and drag it all the way to the top style tag and delete it. Do the same for anything in between the head tags, but leave the tags there just in case. Now, before anything else, we're going to do something to make removing all the junk code a lot easier. I'll explain what we're about to do first. As you can see here, when you stretch the window, the text will stay mostly where it is. Basically, it's not wrapping around to the next line like we want it to. So if we were to try and take a string of code to find and replace through the whole document, it's not going to be able to find it because half of it is on the next line. Here, I'll show you an example. Notice this tag here that starts with span. It's all over the place, and it's junk. You don't need it, you don't want it. Notice here how it wraps to the next line. Watch when I try to find it. It couldn't, even though it's right there. First, 
make sure you're clicked all the way up at the top left of the document so it gets everything. Hit Control F on your keyboard to bring up the Find box. Then go to the Replace tab in the window. At the bottom in Search Mode, select Extended. Next, put in a backslash, then the letter R, then another backslash, then the letter N in the Find What box. Now put a space in the Replace With box and click Replace All. Now everything will be in one line, but we want it to be separated by paragraphs so it's easier to see everything. So next in the Find What box, we'll put a paragraph closing tag. That's this you see on the screen right now. Then in the Replace With box, put it in again, followed by backslash R, backslash N, backslash R, backslash N again. Now hit Replace All. Doesn't that look a little better than before? Not quite done yet, though. We'll first want to fix our first paragraph, as it didn't get fixed with our last replacement. So look for the symbol on the screen near the top, and then just get that on a new line by itself. You can also clean up the top section of the code as well, so it looks nicer. Lastly, before we get into the nitty-gritty of cleaning, another thing you'll want to do is fix how the paragraphs look right now. So enter a space, then the character on the screen into the Find box. And in the Replace box, just enter that same symbol, but without the space. Then click Replace All. You may need to repeat this so that the paragraphs are all the way to the left. Now that looks a lot better. If you stretch the screen, the paragraphs will stretch with it and that will make things easier for the next step. So, now we're at the final part of our cleaning, and also the longest part. But don't worry, it's not as hard as the previous ones. What you want to do is go through the document looking for things that don't need to be there. And in Notepad++, it makes it easy to find because it colors them in different ways, like red and orange. The first thing I like to do is get clean paragraph starters. So as you can see here, a lot of paragraphs seem to start with this string. That's left over from Microsoft Word and doesn't need to be there, so let's remove that. Select that string up to the end of the first parentheses and copy and paste it into the Find box. Then in the Replace With box, put in a clean paragraph string as seen here. Next, make sure your cursor is at the top of the document and press Replace All. Next, there are some paragraphs which don't have anything in them, like this. All it has is this symbol in it, which is called a non-breaking space. It's unnecessary, so we'll just delete it in the same way we just did. We can copy the whole line, put it into the Find box, and then put nothing in the Replace box, and click Replace All. And we're just going to go down the line through the text and do the same for all the code we see. We want to have clean paragraph returns going straight into our text. Notepad++ will show you any code in different colors and your text in black, so it should be fairly easy to tell the difference. If you're colorblind, then just pay closer attention to the words, and you should be fine. We just want to have blank paragraph symbols, then your text, and then clean paragraph endings. And don't be afraid to use the Find and Replace All feature, as it will make the job a lot easier. A lot of this stuff repeats, so Replace All can often get it in one swoop. 
rather than you taking the time to do it manually. If you've made a mistake, don't worry. All you have to do is press Control Z or go to Edit at the top and click Undo and you've reversed it. You can also do this multiple times if you find the mistake later on. So just go through the document, finding and replacing things that shouldn't be there. I know it's tedious, but it will be worth it in the end, I assure you. A few quick things to note. You'll want to keep the tags HTML, head, and body at the top, as well as their partner closing tags at the bottom, as those are necessary for the HTML to function. Also, if you're having trouble finding where a section of opening and closing tags are, for instance the paragraph tags, you can click your cursor on one of the tags and it will highlight its partner tag. Also be sure to check the code before you replace all, as sometimes code that you want can be hidden in the middle of code you don't, such as this italics tag. So hopefully by the end of this ordeal, you should end up with an HTML document that looks like this. Nice and clean and ready for the next steps to come. Alright, now we have a nice, clean HTML file to work with. You can still upload this file direct to Amazon and it will look better than before, but also very generic. In our next few videos, we'll be going over the program I use, Sigil and using it to make your Kindle file look the way you want. So for now, let me know if you have any questions about today's video in the comments, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, and remember that Second Drafts has everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.